Hi, I want to talk to you briefly about what I mean when I ask you to look at a text rhetorically. And so I want to use this example op-ed that I provided, uh, and I'm working from the assumption that you've already read this text and that you have some understanding uh, about it. Uh, but I'm doing this to give you a, a clear sense of what I'm looking for uh, as you guys get into doing the analysis in this first unit. Uh, and so if you've read this text, uh, you can think about the, the sort of questions I might ask you. Uh, I might ask, uh, what was the argument of the text? Uh, and then if you respond with, well, the text is about how this guy thinks about the educational system, you wouldn't quite be giving me the argument. Uh, I might ask you, what's the argument? And you might respond, yeah, I totally agree with this guy. Uh, and so the challenge now is that those two responses, whether you're providing a summary or whether you're just giving me an opinion, are not what I'm looking for when I ask you guys to look at how a text works rhetorically. And if you look here, I've highlighted those in red. When you read these op-eds, I imagine that you'll be able to tell me what they're about, but that's the first step. I am asking you to do more than just summarize. Similarly, uh, I'm sure you may have opinions about them. You may like them, you may dislike them, but again, that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is that you can, first and foremost, understand the argument that the text makes. So if you have read this text, you'll see that there is an argument that's being established here, and that J.T. Gatto uh, is building a case. Okay? Uh, he would like to help students. Current educational practices do not help students, Therefore, he needs to quit. And so we have uh, a premise or a claim followed by another premise uh, or another claim, and, and he draws a conclusion. That's what the C stands for there. Uh, and so there is an argument that's established. Uh, and with all of these texts, that's really what I'm asking you to do initially, is to read these op-eds and to understand fundamentally what the argument is that the author's making. And then you can start to dissect the logic of the text. And so if we look at it logically, we can see he does build an argument, and yet there are some challenges uh, in the way he builds an argument. For as much as he gives us claims, he doesn't necessarily provide support. And so, for example, uh, if we were even just to look at this second paragraph, uh, he writes, I've come slowly to understand what it is I really teach, a curriculum of confusion, class position, arbitrary justice, uh, vulgarity, rudeness, etc., etc., etc. Note that he doesn't actually provide specific evidence of any of this. He just tells us it. And so if we were to do an analysis uh, about the logic of the text, we could see that he does build an argument, but that he doesn't necessarily bring in specific evidence for the individual claims that he makes. Now, that doesn't mean that the text isn't effective. And when we talk about effective, we're really looking at how it functions rhetorically, right? How these other appeals are being used. Uh, and so one really interesting thing about this text is if you look at the bottom, whoops, you can see that uh, this guy, John Taylor Gatto, uh, wrote this op-ed for the Wall Street Journal in 1991, and he was the New York State Teacher of the Year. So here's this guy who's got a ton of credibility in the classroom, and yet tells everybody he needs to quit. And so if we think about that, we're starting to move to how he uses ethos. Right? Uh, he uses his credibility. He was a Teacher of the Year, therefore it's likely the audience will give him credit for his opinions. Perhaps he doesn't necessarily need the evidence because he's already garnered the respect of the reader. And he does some other things, too. If you do look at the examples that he peppers throughout this text, uh, he uses examples that are probably really familiar to anyone who's been in school. Right? He talks about the school bell. He talks about uh, how certain students are titled certain ways, learning disabled, etc. And a lot of that stuff probably resonates with the reader, and the reader then fills it in with his or her own examples. And so we can see how he's actually using pathos. Pathos in the sense that he's able to identify with the readers, or that the readers are able to identify uh, with him. Right? Uh, and he also plays on these cultural narratives in the text. Uh, as we get closer to the end here, uh, he starts to play on this idea that uh, throwing more money at education isn't necessarily going to be the solution. And that's an idea that a lot of folks out there already believe in. And so he's playing on this cultural narrative or this cultural value uh, that some in the audience might already have. And so that's now how we're seeing the text function rhetorically, uh, at least with regard to those other appeals like pathos, um, ethos, and mythos. Uh, and so that's the sort of thing I'm asking you guys to do as you read these texts. Right? Uh, I'm not interested in summary. 
I'm not interested in your opinion, although I respect that you do have one, but really I want you to be able to articulate the arguments that the texts are making, and then I want you to real, really consider the extent to which these arguments are being made reasonably, or the, uh, the extent to which the author is using logic, and then I want you to think about these other appeals. I hope this gives you some insight into what I'm looking for in this first unit. Thank you.